Marcoletta, 24 years old. I work as a nurse full time in the Emerge. And nine weeks ago, I made the decision with my coach, Nico, to decide my first men's physique competition. And yeah, the last nine weeks has been filled with like a lot of ups and downs. Um, but I feel like uh, all that was like for the better. Honestly, it's something that I had in my mind for a while now, maybe like four years. I remember specifically watching Christian on YouTube and him just making me want to start lifting and getting into all that stuff. And I actually, funny story, started rec recording myself two years ago in my second, or four years ago in my second year of nursing school, but that never took off anywhere. I wasn't consistent, I was really shy, and I didn't, I basically didn't believe in myself. And nine weeks ago, I, that was the same story. I was actually working one night in the Emerge. I was just looking for another workout plan to do because I got bored of the one that I was doing by Jeff Nippard. And I came across Nico's page. Um, I signed up for his email subscription list and then I never got the free PDF that he promised because he actually took it down, but he noticed that I signed up and he messaged me personally and he was asking me why I, didn't, why I wasn't competing because he knew that I was cutting for summer but he was like, why not take that up a notch and take that to the next step and compete in your first show. And he kind of like helped me realize that I was making a lot of excuses and putting it off year after year, four years now. I think Nico actually, first and foremost, like told me that he believed in me. And I think that was just the beginning of everything. That was the beginning of prep. We went back and forth quite a bit on through the DMs because he kept questioning me why why push it back another year because I told him maybe it's something that I'd consider doing next year, the year after that, basically what I've been doing the last four years just because I, there's always an excuse that came up whether that be I don't think I'm big enough yet, I don't think I have enough time in nine weeks, um, basically just didn't feel the confidence or like the belief that Nico had in me, I didn't give to myself. Specifically speaking, I think the hardest days would definitely be the days where I had to also fit in shifts, um, do 12 hour shifts at work, work as a nurse, still be patient, still be mentally sharp so that I could, you know, provide the best care that I could and not, you know, half ass my job at work so that I could focus my, on the workout or all that stuff. And then on top of work, and fitting in my workouts, whether that be before a night shift, after a night shift, before a day shift, after a day shift, fit that in. You also have things like meal prep. You gotta make sure all my meals are ready for the next day, the next couple days, for the day of. So, and then on top of that, even just like being on top of life, life will still go on with me doing prep. It's just another thing that I have to add on because I'm still balancing my relationship with my girlfriend, my family, who, again, I didn't tell that I was going on prep. So I kind of feel really bad, like I was saying, because I definitely got hangry at them and they didn't know. My dad thought I was sick because I lost a lot of weight. My mom was worried. She thought that I was going through something. So my bad on that part. But yeah. Days like that were definitely the toughest, especially if I if at one especially if the day that I was working and working out was a leg day. Yeah, leg day, cardio, and a 12-hour shift. And low calories is rough, especially because early on I was still, like I said, figuring out foods that that worked for me, that I enjoyed, that would keep me full, satiated, and mentally good. Yeah, I feel like up till week nine, which is right now, I, I still change foods from time to time to fit and see what I like and convince my diet and all that stuff. I'm pretty chill, which I like to think I am too, but a lot of people don't see how I am, you know, when I'm not at work, when I'm not at the gym, when I'm not in public and I'm just myself with the people I love, like Emily, my family. 
I remember specifically going to the cottage with Emily a couple times and yeah, there was definitely no reason for me to get mad at her or angry for so many times or reasons, but I did. And it wasn't fair to her because I took it out. I took out my hangriness on her. Um, yeah. Remember crying a, a bit here and there, but you know, we, I'm happy that we, we got past that. And I felt like I learned a lot about myself. We learned a lot about each other. And you know, it's just another learning experience that I wouldn't take back. The same goes with my family. Um, it being rougher on my family, I think my mom and dad who like love me unconditionally, what, even though like I probably don't give them, I haven't been giving them enough time for sure. My mom's been bugging me to go to sushi. Um, my dad literally just works day in and day out. He doesn't complain. Does a lot of my dishes because I, I end up leaving them and I mean to do them later, but then he ends up seeing them and he's just the type of person to to want to do them, to just get the work done and do do it regardless. And yeah, I think those those three people, I definitely like owe them a lot and I'm thankful for them, happy to have them to anyone, but especially those three. You know, just thank you for putting up with me being there for me, understanding me and being patient with me. Like, I don't even know if I could have dealt with myself at, at times because you're, you're, so, you're a different person when you're on prep. You're, you're not the same person. You're, yeah, it's not like I'm struggling with something that could be a lot worse, like financially struggling, not having food on the table, not having a house over over my head, but like prep was something that I chose to do and I I I had to know well going into it that, you know, there are consequences like that. Like I've seen it firsthand just watching so much YouTube, seeing all these YouTubers that compete and put it on YouTube and share that you never really do understand what it's like until you put yourself through it yourself and yeah I'm just so happy that I think these last 60 days nine weeks I've also accidentally is one word that I'm gonna use but there's probably another word for it but I'm gonna stick with accidentally I've been a lot because I've had to prioritize my time, I've been really mindful and careful of who I'm spending my time with. And honestly, I'm so happy that I think I could say that majority or if not everyone that I've hung out with during this prep, not to knock it against anyone that I haven't seen that I miss. I'm happy that I've surrounded myself with the people that I have during these last 60 plus days because I feel like everyone's helped me develop or become the person who I am at the end of prep. Um, mentally, I feel like going back to belief, I believe in myself that much more. Um, I'm willing to do things that I wasn't. Um, I definitely was scared to do a lot of things like post on Instagram daily. Like I was scared that people were gonna think this or that. I was scared to change my Instagram handle to Mark G Fitness, but that's cause yeah, I would always be self-conscious about what other people would think. But now I, it doesn't really matter cause what I'm doing now has a bigger purpose more than just me. I wanna help people so if that means changing my Instagram handle so that people can search me more, then I'm gonna do that. If I have to post every day, whether I feel like it or not, just to reach people and help inspire people and hopefully answer some people's questions or anything like that. It's something that I wanna do, because honestly, I've been on the sideline the last four years watching, absorbing all that stuff 
from all the YouTubers, all these people that have, you know, just been giving value, giving help, and I kind of want to do the same for them, what those people have done for me. So it, feel, it feels good to, one, make it through the last 60 plus days, but it feels even better knowing that it's more than just me and that I was able to help people, whether that be one person, which was my goal at the beginning of prep. One, my two big goals or big whys was to one, believe in, learn to believe in myself more, but two, to also help and inspire people. And you guys probably saw the clip of me and my daily journal that my coach made me get into, which is one habit that definitely I think is key or was key for me at least. But there's a part in that journal that makes you write a goal down every day and honestly the last 60 days that goal has just been getting bigger and bigger and I remember the last one that I wrote was to just inspire the world so I feel like I'm working on that slowly I don't care how long it's gonna take but it's something that honestly just I feel right there that I want to want to go after starting with this show yeah I feel like throughout the last 60 days I've had I've had like I'm thankful I've had a lot of people that I was friends with at one point in time or you know just connected to someone somehow some way reach out to me take the time to reach out to me to you know thank me notice my progress all that stuff but to also just like ask for advice um, so to all those people one thing. I think it, it definitely has to go with my goals and going back to believing in yourself, which is cheesy or cliche, as cliche as it sounds, but um, I think it's to, to move in the direction of fear. So essentially do the thing so that you can have the power. This is something that my buddy over here, David, Mr. David Hammond actually um, who is where I heard their quote from, even though he didn't make the, the quote up. It's something that he actually helped impose onto me and it's something that I took deeply internally and that I just flicked the switch for me. And I think that's one of the things that helped me like move towards believing in myself. Yeah, I supported myself with a great coach, friends, family, everyone who was there for me the last 60 days and even before that, but I think it's to do things that scare you. Get, don't get comfortable and just push yourself out of your comfort zone because that's where growth is. There's so many motivational speeches on things like failure and believing yourself and all that stuff, but that literally is the advice that I would I'd still give myself at the beginning of prep. Maybe it took a couple times for me to realize or a couple times to hear, but that's literally what I would continuously tell myself and you guys who might be struggling with something that you've been wanting to do, maybe like me putting off for a couple of years now, four years to be exact for me, is to just start, it's just you that's holding yourself back, whether you know it or not. I was the one making excuses as to why I couldn't do my first show and yeah, made the decision, have a goal, because then if you have a goal, you remember your why. And then from there, you just got to learn to believe in yourself, do the things that scare you, grow. So that includes failures. Failure isn't a bad thing because every failure is a learning opportunity, even now. I'm starting YouTube and I'm, I know that I'm not the best, but with each YouTube video, I feel like I'm getting a little better. I'm learning a thing or two and 
that's all part of the journey. It's all part of the process and it's all part of the game. No one starts out to be a Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan himself started from the bottom and he worked his ass off to get to where he is today. And I feel like I'm rambling a bit, but basically believe in yourself, learn to believe in yourself. You're not always going to, and that's okay. But just come back to that and yeah thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed my name is mark Coletta, and i'll see you guys in the next one